All right, this is our first lesson in chapter four. Chapter four talks about patterns and equations and lines. And today I want to show you how you can recognize and extend a pattern using drawings, something called a table of values, uh, which I label as TOV, words, and finally by writing an equation. This is probably gonna be the hardest part today. But math is really about patterns, and so today we want to connect the idea of patterns with equations. Let's look at our first example. You see my lovely pictures? Figure one, there's one square in that. Figure two, there's four. Figure three, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's like I added these three pieces, right? Seven, I guess I should write this down, one, four, seven. Figure four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm adding these ones, so eight, nine, ten. So my question to you now is, what does figure five look like? Can you draw it out yourself? And then I'm going to ask you to try to complete, in part B, this statement here. So if you look at figure five, it looks like it's just the previous figure, and I'm going to add these three at the top. So let me just ask you to draw them out. So there's two squares in the bottom, three squares in the next row above it, another three squares, but shifted, and then two like this. Okay, so that's exactly the same as figure four. And notice in each one of these figures, I'm adding those three additional ones up top. So let me just do the same thing. One, two, three. So this is what figure five looks like. And because I added three more figures, now I know there are 13 squares in my diagram. So if I ask you to describe a pattern, if I ask you to compare this as the figure number increases, so one, two, three, four, five, if it increases by one unit, the question is how many additional squares do I have in my diagram? And if you said three, I like it. So I'll say it increases because it gets more by three. So notice as the figure number increases by one, the number of squares increases by three. So for example, from figure four to figure five, that number went up by one, and then the number of squares went from 10 to 13, okay? So that is a pattern we can describe in words. Let's see if we can do the same pattern using what I call a table of values. And in this case, we're gonna make a little chart or a table, and on the left-hand side, I've got my figure number as my title, and I've got one, two, three, four, so the first four. And then for my next column, my title is the number of squares. And in figure one, do you remember how many squares there were? Let's look again. There was one. In figure number two, there were four. Figure number three, there were seven. And lastly, figure number four, there were ten. Of course, I can extend the table, but right now I just have enough room for four rows. Okay, so here's the hard part. Now I'm gonna ask you to write an equation to represent this pattern. Now, before we actually write the equation, I want to let you know that any pattern that continues by increasing or decreasing by the same value, which is kind of what we set up here, right? Increases by three every single time. We have a special name for that type of pattern. It's called a linear pattern, L-I-N-E-A-R, linear pattern. And I'll show you why in the next few lessons, but right now, just trust me, it's called a linear pattern. And in this example, the pattern increases by three. Linear patterns, though, are found by multiplying by the increasing, decreasing value, okay? You're gonna take that and multiply it by a variable. And then you're gonna either add or subtract a value to ensure that we get the proper number. So, once again, let's extend our chart now. We've still got the figure number. We have the number of squares. I'm just going to copy from above. And then we have this extra row called N. Okay? N just means, hey, I don't know what the figure number is, but you should be able to describe to me an equation or expression to help me find the number of squares. And to do that, we're going to use this extra space here to help us out. Okay? And we're also going to use this definition here multiplying the increasing decreasing value by a variable, and then either subtracting or adding a value. So what is that increasing decreasing value in this question? That's right, it's three. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is just write down the number three in each of these rows, okay? Except for the last one for now, okay? So just go three, 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 three. 
and we're going to multiply it by a variable. But in this case, what is our variable? Well, <clears throat> I want you to use the figure number. Okay, so I want to ask you to go three and multiply each of these by the figure number. So for the first row, you see figure number is one. The second row, the figure number is two. The third row, the figure number is three. And the fourth row, the figure number is four. Okay. Now, what's three times one for our first row? That's three, but we want the answer of one. Okay, let's look at the next row. Three times two, that's six, but we want the answer of four. 3 times 3 is 9, but we want the answer of 7. 3 times 4 is 12, but we want the answer being 10. So then we have this extra part where it says we have to add or subtract a value. So what should I do to each one of these numbers to get the number of squares? So for example, 3 times 1 is 3. What should I be doing okay, to get me the number 1? And if you say adding, I think you're wrong. We should be actually subtracting. That's correct. What number should I subtract? 2. You're right. Now, is that the same throughout? Let's look at the next one. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Yeah. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. Bravo. That value at the end should always be the same. So this is great because can you see the pattern now? The pattern is we always have a 3, and we always have a subtract 2. And what changes from row to row? The 1 represents the figure number. The 2 represents the figure number. The 3 represents the figure number. The 4 represents the figure number. So what is our variable here? Well, our variable will just be the letter N, which represents our figure number. So therefore, the number of squares here, the expression is just 3N minus 2. Okay. We don't need that bracket there, 3 times n is just 3n. Okay. And therefore, underneath, if I ask you for an equation, I'll say, therefore, the equation is, and the number of squares is represented by the letter s, so s can be found or equals to 3 multiplied by n minus 2. So this is our equation. And why are equations helpful? Because no longer will I need to draw every single figure to calculate the number of squares used. I can now use this lovely equation to help me out. So for example, if I said, hey, tell me how many squares are in figure number 100. I don't want you to draw 100. You could if you want. You'll be here all day. But all you can do now, and you don't need to write this down, but all you need to do is just replace n with 100. So 3 times 100 equals to 300 minus 2, and I can say there are 298, okay? But I just made up that question, so let's just erase that to make your notes nice, okay? Let's turn the page. So it says, now that you have the equation, you can use it to answer some questions. So once again, how many squares are in the 12th figure? Well, yeah, let's use our equation. S equals 3N minus 2. In this case, I'm asking you how many squares, so the idea is you want to find S, and so therefore you should know N, you should know the figure number, in this case N is 12, so find S when N equals to 12. Well, how do you do that? Just replace N with 12, so 3 times 12 minus 2. 3 times 12 is 36, 36 minus 2, that must be 34, so therefore Figure number 12 contains 34 squares. Okay? And that's one of the powerful things of having this equation. Like I said, you don't need to draw them out anymore. I can use the equation to help me figure this out. I can also answer a question like this. Which figure contains 109 squares? So once again, I'm going to ask you to write down the formula. Well, not formula, the equation. And this time, I have the S, so I'm asking you the figure number. So I want you to find N when S, which stands for the number of squares, equals 109. So now this is algebra, where I'm going to replace the S with 109. And now you're left with one variable, so this I hope you've done in grade 8. So let's go ahead now and try to solve this equation. This is 3 times N minus 2. Going to isolate the n, so we'll add 2 to both sides first of all. So 
that'll be what 111 equals to 3 multiplied by n or 3 times n to solve for n we will now just divide both sides by 3 because the opposite of multiplication is division and 111 divided by 3 I believe that is equal to 37 so which figure contains 109 squares I'll say figure number 37 contains 109 squares okay so once again I've showed you a few ways of describing patterns in words as a table now as equation and how helpful the equation could be all right we got one more example for today so I'd like you to take a look at number two very similar except this time I use the variables v and t so I want you to describe a pattern that relates v to t meaning v should be equal to something in terms of t all right so here's our term numbers here's our term value let's use the letter v and I'm gonna give you some space here to help us figure out the pattern and so if you forgot what the pattern requires it requires us to do the following right here I'll do it in purple linear patterns found by multiplying by the increasing decreasing value of a variable and then adding or subtracting a value to ensure you get the number so the first thing I like you to do if you forgot and by the way if you can do this on your own try it right now on your own pause the video do it and then come back and check your answer that's a better way of learning than just listening to me going blah 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 but for those of you who want to listen now look as the term number increases by one every single time how does the term value change yeah it looks like it decreases this time by six every single time and by the way for linear patterns they are always the same when you go through the row you should have the same decreasing or increasing number so what we did was we used negative six as our starting value and then we said we have to multiply it by a variable, in this case the term number. So I'm just going to write down 6, negative 6 times 1, negative 6 times 2, negative 6 times 3, and negative 6 times 4. Okay? The hardest part now is figuring out what that magic number will be so that we can get our final answer of these term values. So if I look at the first one here, I've got negative 6 times 1. That's just the same thing as negative 6. So negative 6 plus something gives me 25. That's what you want to try to figure out. In the next row, negative 6 times 2, that's negative 12. So negative 12 plus or minus that same something should equal to 19. And so on. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Add that same something. That should give me 13. So what is that box going to be? If you said the answer is 31 think you are correct don't freak out if they're big numbers but that is helpful because now we found that magic number that makes the term value what we want so therefore if we extend now this chart which I will ask you to do what is now the general way of describing an equation that relates V with T in this case the pattern looks like the following negative 6 instead of the 1 2 3 4 that's my t value do we add to that 31 or the equation that relates v to t is v is equal to negative 6 times t plus 31 yeah, this stuff's not easy, so we're going to do some more practice in class, all right? But if you can understand this video quite well, then you are a good step ahead of most other students.